Hello there. Welcome back to my channel, Snips by Kelly. I'm Kelly and we made it. The final 100 plus layout share in my nostalgia series. Let's go. Here we are. We are there. We are at the final video in the nostalgia series where I have shared 100 plus pages a week for five weeks. This is the fifth week and I don't know whether to cheer or whether to cry. It was again so hard to narrow it down but before I start I want to say my deepest deepest gratitude to not only all of you out there that have followed me this last year on YouTube. I started my YouTube channel a year ago on the 28th of this month, but those who have followed me for nine years in Close to My Heart, on my blog, on my Pinterest, on my Facebook, in person, I am so grateful for you sharing the love of paper crafting with me, sharing your talents, sharing your pages, sharing your stories, um, your patronage, your support, your cheers, just it, you have blessed my life just period. You have blessed my life. I can't wait to continue on a new adventure, but I honor close to my heart today with the last of the last. And I have some very simple pages from the very beginning and some very fancy pages from the evolution of not only my skills, but the evolution of scrapbooking, the evolution of memory keeping. And it's so wonderful to pay tribute. So let's get started. Here we it's go. It's hard to know where to begin but we're starting off with a gorgeous, I believe it was called You Are Enough. And I did a huge uh, virtual weekend event for this and it had this great stencil. So we did a lot of stenciling in the background. We did tearing and then popping up on the torn edges. There was lots of embedded foil into these uh, pieces and then we had um, gold foil accents and we also used a little bit of, I believe we used stickles, goldenrod stickles with that. A couple little Cricut cut flourishes, but the stickers in themselves were just absolutely gorgeous. We had so much fun. My paper crafters and I laughed and laughed and had so much fun. That one was a lot of work because... Uh, these were stamped, of course, and thin cut, and we had tons of florals in it. It just lent itself really, really well to all of the florals. Backtracking here to a Serenity. Let me get out for the double page. I don't need to say much about Serenity. Everyone knows Serenity. So gorgeous. But the reason I pulled this one is the circles. So we have circles folded in half to create the little window and you could have them popped up or pressed down and then you could back those circles with pattern paper and it was such a fun technique to have these little peekaboo circles or peekaboo windows and then of course we had some additional papers that were gold foil we also had silver foil that were wonderful accents and then um, gold embellishing thread a few Cricut cuts here but just backing those photos with that gold pattern paper was gorgeous we did a little bit of splattering in the background on some specialty paper and then we had little uh, sapphire glitter paper accents and embellishments. Such an incredible line. Still with some florals, we're on You Are Enough. And I did scribble circles. I do have a process video on how to quickly and easily make these scribble circles on the Cricut yourself. I'll link that up in the description for you. But this had so much hidden technique in it. We had some stamps that were little um, foof stamps or blotch stamps. So you can see those in the background. We had written word stamps that we did some stamping in the background. We did ink blending with blending brushes in the background and then a fun play on the slant here adding little strips of paper as an added diagonal element tucked inside there with some word zip strips as well. Again all of the florals in this collection were 
the stamped and thin cut and then we did ink rubbing in the center so these papers the background papers were already um multi-wash colors and so it was perfect to cut the flowers out of those it made them look like they had many tones to them and then we did ink rubbing in the center as well as some of those golden rod stickles we did some curving uh curved stamping by curving our stamps on our blocks so we did a little bit of of technique there such a gorgeous collection this one I actually do have a full process video for and this was our irresistibles resist cardstock so all of this pattern in the background all of these patterns here in the circle were all created by inking a resist cardstock that has a pattern underneath. So you rub the ink onto the resist cardstock, wipe it off, and there are sections in that cardstock that don't uh, take the ink and sections that take the ink. And then this circle background was, I believe, originated from Karen Pedersen from our art studio, but it was redesigned on the Cricut by Christine K. And Christine is a Cricut whiz. I'll link her up in the description and she shared this file for all of us to use. And I added some really large florals to that and just a few little uh, Cricut leaves here. And of course, this scalloped background that I did the Cricut writing on. I also did some curved writing because our Cricut will do that for us now. And then just a little inking on the word beautiful and some splattering with a black shimmer brush. I'm just quickly going to show one more to show another take on that. So here is one where I used the same technique, two different pages. This is my grandson, Waylon James, and my son, Zachary Allen, my friend, Amy. But you can see that I still used this same scalloped background. The back is still... Um, the Irresistibles Resist cardstock. These strips are also the Irresistibles Resist cardstock. I just use the Let's Play Thin Cuts to accent this page. So those Irresistibles are so great because you can use any ink that you want to use on that and it turns out perfect. This was what I call a leftover page. So I think we did 14 pages in my You Are Enough online event and this was what was left. Just some odd stickers and so we did some stamping of word stamps in the background some blotch stamping in the background we did a butterfly embossing folder here in the corners with some stencil inking on the top and then just used every single sticker that was left over in the um bundle to create that focal page. This is our gorgeous journey. I do have a process video on this one. I did an uploaded SVG. So we had best day ever is one of our SVGs that was only a dollar. And then I did every technique you could imagine on this. So I did some puddling and pooling for some watercolor wash. You can see that in the background. I did some distress stamping in the background. I did resist cardstock. I did um, white gel pen. We did a shaker window. We did blending with blending brushes. A lot of these little cutout pieces are stamped. I did journal lines with a journaling pen and I did inking on the edges. My gosh, I can't remember what else, but it was such a fun page with so much technique in it. And there is a process video for that one that I'll link in the description. This one is a simple patchwork and this was our Gnomes for Autumn, as well as I believe there's bits and pieces of season mixins and cozy up in it. And we had a cute little apple basket stamp and we also had textured leaves. And so I just added this playful uh, the scene of our Tommy cat and my son Zachary for a standard grid and patchwork feel and then added a little bit of um, shimmer brush to those leaves to give that a, like a little nice gold texture. Super basic but super fun. I do think I have a process video for that one too. Okay, reaching way back, 
uh, into my stash. This was one of the very first layouts, as you can tell, that I ever did. So flat and so simple. We have a little gimme some sugar in here, but this was a stamp of the month, and it was a huge stamp of the month that created this whole sentiment. Celebrate life, always have courage, and be kind. And you could color in and do different decorating inside that stamp. It was a focal stamp that could take up most of the page and then we had blotch stamping in the background so simple but so fun where you're focusing on a stamp only oh my going way back here this one's a little bit embarrassing but i did want to pull it out for uh, one reason and that was the textured background so we had a lot of embossing folders in using textured backgrounds this was urban i did a little cricket writing around the edges and made it made the funky guitar but as you can tell almost everything is flat this was a chipboard piece so it seems like it's a little higher but even the guitar Back in the day, I just did not use foam tape and dimension like we do today. That's a big difference. And I have a lot of layouts that I'm gonna show you uh, from the very beginning that you can just see the difference in um, the raised techniques, the dimension, the texture that we've added in these later years to scrapbooking. This one was called Are We There Yet? And of course it was so fun. Um, back in the day, there was one called Prickly Pear. And I designed a globe for prickly pear where I did the writing, cricket writing right on top of the globe. Back when I did it for prickly pear, we didn't have a curved text tool on the cricket. So I had to drag each letter in there to make that and have the cricket right on the globe. So fast forward now, we have curved text and we can just put full sentences onto our um, objects. And so I backed it with the uh, Are We There Yet papers, made these really fun airplanes on the Cricut Explore the World. The Starburst was actually some inside pieces that came with the kit. And I actually used the Starburst part in a sec a, a separate layout. And then I used the insides to create an additional starburst, just using some of those die cuts and things to my advantage that come right in our workshop kits. Oh my, going way back, way, way back here. I think this one was called Falling for You. Again, one of the very first workshops that I did. And you can tell the basic, basic background. The twine is always a dead giveaway. And the stamping on the photo place cards is always a dead giveaway. But we did have a new alphabet set. So we were able to cut out of pattern paper our letters. And we did get some chipboard pieces we were able to back. And then back in the day, I was all about ginormous cricket pieces. Pieces. So I made this enormous pumpkin and backed it with paper and fussy cut some elements right out of paper. And so, yeah, that is a blast from the past for sure. And I brought one more of those out. Makes me laugh. Um, but again, the ginormous Cricut elements, the enormous Cricut wagon with some pattern paper, uh, fussy cut out of pattern paper and just a simple, simple, simple layout of the photos and some random leaves. It is so fun to see how we've evolved and how things have changed. Oh, I brought one more of those. I must have really been feeling sentimental. So this one probably needed a lot more balance and I just didn't know what I was doing back then, but I made a little wreath out of some sunflowers and I did some of my first Cricut writing that I ever did. It was a little choppy, um, but it was fun back then to experiment with all of that. And you can see, I think this, we had a little supplement called Creative Insider. And Creative Insider gave us layouts that we could make out of bulk paper that hardly used any paper so that we could reduplicate it for many, many customers without breaking the bank. And I think this was a very basic Creative Insider layout, aside from the ginormous, um, the ginormous wreath over there. But I thought that was really fun. 
So I pulled this one from Serenity. It's a Simply Scrappin, so there's no Cricut cuts or uh, no, not a lot of pizzazz, but I pulled this one because every single piece in here is a picture my life card or what most people call a pocket card. I do think it goes like this. And then that was the beginning of making odd size photos. Of course, we can make odd size photos now on our apps. You know, we have lots of apps that make odd size photos, but it allowed for so many more photo opportunities to make those just a tiny bit smaller than a three by four. You could get so many more on a page and it's such a basic page, but I love that every single pattern Pattern came from a pocket card. I really loved that. We have a little bit more serenity here showing how you can really pizzazz up or jazz up basic strips. So again, just a basic background uh, where we have it matted in the back, strips of different sizes all the way down and adding clusters of Cricut elements and a Cricut title. This one was a pocket card and some of the tabs and tags and things that came right in the kit, a teeny tiny, tiny bit of conservative splattering. Um, and I believe maybe I did make this out of a pine cone stamp. So maybe making some of my own pattern paper from stamping as well. I loved the gold accents in Serenity. Uh, everyone did. One more Serenity here. This one, again, some really, really fine splattering uh, to make. And I think it was actually with a spritzing bottle. So uh, a little bit of spritzing with a spritzing spray or a gloss spray. Um, um, and just being super gentle with that and spritzing that background so it had a really, really light glow. What I loved about this page is the L. So I did crisscross with strips going down and strips going across for a landing for the photo. So you have a landing and a landing and then adding the uh, frame, the Cricut frame is just a photo frame with leaves coming out of it and some Cricut flowers, a little bit of our embossing thread and some little tiny sapphire glitter paper pieces there. Going back now, I believe I showed a lot of these on the previous 100 page shares, a lot of beach party. But as soon as I saw this one, I'm like, I'm going to go back and shop my own patterns. I love this pattern um, and I don't use hexagons enough, but how wonderful just to have a hexagon middle and then arrange your photos uh, through that and add a couple little icons. I loved these little sunglasses and flip flops off of our beach party collections. So I kept it a little bit um, color family so, so that the sunglasses and the flip-flops matched each other throughout the page, but love the hexagon background. I'm definitely going to revisit some of my old patterns. And then we went to this playful, fun, Tutti Fruity. It was all about summer ice cream, but it was very pastel. It wasn't always that easy to use. So I did a lot of um, accents with Capri to bring out some bolder colors. And I wanted to use strips. And then we had this scallop st sticker that came right on the sticker sheet to be able to create kind of an ice cream stand feel. And then of course we had some scallop pieces that came right in the kit. And then these cute Cute, cute little fruit um, little uh, sequins and they were kind of a rubbery sequin and they had hearts and they had little different pieces of fruit in there hence the name Tutti Fruity. The scallop circles came right in the kit as punch outs as I think the circles did or I could have used our circle punch on those. I might have used our circle punch on those and then a classic st stitched overlay that I've shown everybody a thousand times how to make on your own, but I will link it one more time in the description in case you're new to my channel and you didn't get that tutorial. Let's see. I don't know if this actually goes together. It might go together. Another 2D Fruity using all of those circles. I do remember now these circles some of them came right in the kit and some of them I made. 
And so your standard scribble circle, but one with stars in it, we have some stitch circles from our shaker window, our circle shaker window, some of the elements that came out of it and some of the elements that were punch outs in the kit and just so playful and summer and fun. Obviously you can think of um, kids eating ice cream in the summer or ice cream stands or anything like that would have been so adorable popsicles things like that reminds me of the day when my mom had the old plastic popsicle holders they could have been tupperware and we would fill them with kool-aid horrible um and put them in the freezer and we had a wonderful time with that so again just a basic one but just a play on a stitch circle so just like you can add stitching to squares like i taught in the cricut tutorial um, you can add stitching to circles as well just to give yourself a little bit of a variety instead of only using plain squares and plain circles. And then we had this great stacked ice cream cone and I want to say it was from our Stars and Sparklers collection. I don't know that. Don't quote me on that, but it had a great sugar cone and I love that. It had these popsicles as well and though they were a lot of fun to use. One more from Tutti Fruity a basic one with strips. So I've done this a lot where I will do a watercolor wash in the background. This one was a pre-printed watercolor wash, but I'll use ink pads to do that. But I'll also put strips of paper on, um, on a background and then cut those strips into strips so that you get multi-colors like this. In this particular kit, they gave us those already pre-printed, which was a lot of fun. And then of course, those great shakers again with the, um, the 2D fruity shapes the fruit shapes and lots of cute cute little summery stickers there this next one was going back to Sawyer and it's a Simply Scrap in one. Again, no Cricut cuts or nothing fancy with this one, but cutting a long rectangle, cutting it on a diagonal and using the triangle bits to create a top and a bottom with a linear style layout in the middle. And I thought that was really worth bringing up because it's just a fun way to add a different top and a different bottom to a page. And you don't have to have big wide ones. I've done big wide ones you can have just narrow ones and you're not wasting because you're using both sides in both places and so it's kind of just a fun play on a basic layout this one was a Sawyer and I did an over the top layout just like this with all kinds of thin cuts, but I wanted to reduplicate that with um, only stickers. Um, and so I actually used stickers from the sticker sheet for this one. And then this Best Friends was part of the sticker sheet as well. Did some shimmer brush splattering, some tri-blend markering techniques and some ink blending in the background of that. Another Sawyer that I brought out just because this was a pattern paper piece and showing how you can take banners and things that are embedded right in a pattern paper piece and make embellishments out of those. And I love to take little elements that are within the paper and make cute little additional sort of like ephemera pieces from those. Here we have a traditional diamond layout. This one was called Smarty Pants and um, we had one like this for Hey Handsome and there's been others many others over the years where instead of making the square grids in the back you turn them on their side and make diamonds and do different layering so some of them have three pieces in their layers some of them have two pieces in the layers and we had these really cute stickers that had definitions on them and cork shapes that went with this collection as well we always need back to school so that one was fun this one was called Good Vibes, and this was a leftover. So a lot of times when we get a collection as part of the, uh, like I say, National Scrapbooking Day, I will um, do all of the um, pieces, all of the layouts that come with a set that are done by the company. And then I'll take the bag of leftovers and try to show my paper crafters if there's something that they can do. Sometimes it's tricky because there isn't much left at all. So on this one, there were just little pieces. In fact, I think some of these aren't even all the way down. They're just little pieces on the top and the bottom. And then maybe 
maybe a couple that were long enough to, to flow all the way through. So I just had little teeny bits and pieces left and made a little central grid there and added every weird sticker that was left over and it looked like I meant to do it. I love that when you can make something work um, out of what is left over. I think we're back here to you are enough and again there's that wide stitch frame that i've so widely used i'm trying to think here how i did this i think what i did oh why i wanted to show this is i took this whole paper that was a 12 by 12 and i cut a frame a one inch frame all the way around but then I also cut an additional like eighth of an inch off so that I could get these patterns to line up so that even though it was taken out of the middle and inserted off of the stitched frame these patterns lined up so that your eye flows all the way down and I believe I did do a video on this one and it was all about the tags creating all these tags in different ways Ways. and um, I will link that video in the description but we did first and second generation stamping and ink rubbing on this one we did a butterfly embossing folder and stenciling over the top of this one some distress stamping on this one word stamping on this one blotch stamping and sentiment stamping on this one and then again those florals were thin cuts adding the stitch frame and a few little Cricut leaves and then these were die cuts that came right in the kit that I really enjoyed the black die cuts I thought that accenting this collection with black just made it pop and made it wow so here is one from the four seasons collection this is four seasons spring and I believe in a previous video I showed four seasons summer but there was actually four th four seasons spring four seasons summer four seasons winter and four seasons autumn or fall and then I was the guest designer for that and I made one workshop that could apply to all four seasons so we have this same layout only done in the summer papers the fall papers and the winter papers and I just loved it I had so much fun there was um this was thin cutting here um thin cutting uh on these a little bit of foof uh tribal and markering foofs in the background basic strips on the bottom and adding your photos it's a go-to very very easy let me grab the next stack here all right, two more little stacks to go. Woohoo! This was another one of those. It's pretty busy to look at without the photos in place. And I would probably use black and white photos in this or photos that have a lot of greenery. Um, maybe like garden photos or photos that have a lot of greenery in them. Not too busy. Mostly photos that have subjects in them. But this was so fun. Again, this was one from when I was a guest designer and we didn't have hardly anything left so i made my own patterns from the stamp so this is just pattern random pattern stamping on white daisy cardstock in the back and then using the pattern papers as the photo mats and a few little zip strips and again it's really busy but you can envision this with black and white photos sepia photos or photos that just have a lot of green grass or a lot of greenery in them and they would be so beautiful all right memory lane this is one that i do have process videos for for all of memory lane the reason that i brought this one out is because i showed this pattern before in a previous video where you layer square after square after square onto a 12 by 12 and then you cut it on a diagonal and use half on this side and half on that side and then just a little bit of play with tags also we had some vellum so we did some stamping on vellum with our archival black ink and then we colored on the back side of the vellum so that the color would come through the top the little houses the trees had a watercolor wash on them instead of coloring the individual pieces and some of those had to be fussy cut out because there was not a thin cut that came with this set and this is my little grandson Waylon James playing in grandma's kitchen with the lemons all right here we have oh this one was so fun this one is called 
Summer Vibes. Whoops, I've got a little piece that's stuck here. Um, so this one was called Summer Vibes. It was so vibrant, so, so vibrant. And I love drawing out the reds. It reminded me of a picnic, but I did use it for beachy. So we had fringe scissors. We also had the ability to make the fringe pieces on the Cricut. We could use fringe scissors or you could simply snip with your own scissors. And I thought it was a real fun play to fringe the bottom like a little bit of a hula skirt at the bottom since it was tropical. And I thought that was so, so fun. We had some great acrylic shapes that came with this set, a little bit of background splatter and inking and lots and lots of clustering of florals. And then a large focal title up here with the palm leaves. That was great fun. I think this one, Oh my goodness. I I was go really going back. I was really trying to look at it, but I think it was something like um oh, I think it was like something my heart. Oh my heart. I think it was called this actually I don't know if this actually goes together. Yes, I think it does. I think it does and it was little squares, but the reason I pulled this one out is the fringe heart. So here's another play on the fringe, wider fringe, and we had this as a Cricut. It was a wavy fringe that was on the Cricut, but you could easily, easily do that by hand by just snipping that heart. We had a white heart. We did the fringe pieces over the top and fussy cut it around, and these are just tiny little squares in the background, stamping this right on the page adding some stickles on that and some stamped hearts on that to make a focal title. And then these were stickers that came from the sticker sheet and then lots of little stamping of little teeny foofs all over the page. And I love the little love buggy with the balloons. It was adorable. Another one from that, I swear it was called Oh My Heart, but I'm sure someone will probably correct me there. And this was just making the most of the leftover pieces. There was hardly anything left over, making one big focal title and adding stickles in the background. Super, super simple. I didn't want this to be about only those that are over elevated or elevated pages. This one was Daisy Meadows and Daisy Meadows was so fun. It had kind of like a beautiful vibe with florals, but then it also had a playful vibe with bunnies and things like that. So there was an oversized punch out egg and I wanted to somehow draw, this was the only pattern that of that that dot pattern was in the egg. So I sliced off just a teeny tiny bit of the egg on the bottom and drew it over here to be able to draw the pattern over to that second page. And I did Cricut writing on the top and a little bit of ink in the back. And then um, the egg hunt was from the Cricut and the rest was all stickers, but it was so playful and fun to have that big, huge egg for Easter. This one I pulled forward is pretty interesting, but this was a stamp of the month bonus kit from years ago, I think. I don't know. I don't remember the year. Maybe it wasn't that long ago. I'm trying to look at the patterns. It wasn't that long ago because this is Wonderland paper. So, but what I had to do is I like to make a stamp of the month bonus kit every month. And usually it's four or five cards that are pre-cut and pre-designed so that my paper crafters who earn my stamp of the month bonus kit can pull out their stamp of the month and finish it off with the stamping. It's all done for them. They just have to assemble and finish it with the stamping, but it's hard to do a layout for my stamp of the month kit because of shipping, because having to do it in a huge box. So I wanted to design a page that could go together with tiny pieces that would fit in an envelope. If they provided the 12 by 12 white paper in the back, I provided the little pieces in an envelope, then they would be able to get two 12 by 12 pages or a 12 by 12 layout from that one stamp of the month. So we did border stamping up here. We stamped these pieces and mounted them on cardstock and fussy cut them out. We did a little bit of ink blotching and rubbing in the middle of those stamps. We stamped our title on the tag and then we did all the stamping of that on the top. And I thought it was an, a fun way to get them a page without breaking the bank on shipping. 
This one was very basic, but the reason I pulled it out is because it was a calendar kit and um, it had calendar pages in it. And I actually, they don't go together, but I actually made each calendar page into a two page spread so that the 13 pages in the calendar, the cover page in the 12 months could actually be a 26 page uh, um, uh, workshop by spreading the materials over. But one of the reasons I pulled this, these are very basic pages, but this piece right here is the negative throwaway piece to this piece right here. So I was able to get two separate layouts out of that throwaway piece by just backing that throwaway piece by a piece of wood grain pattern. And I love using things that you would normally throw away and adding those to pages to make uh, a fun element to a page. I feel kind of like a scavenger sometimes. Um, this was um, Dreamin' Big years ago called Dreamin' Big, but it was a challenge to make a scrapbook page that was almost 100% stamping. So we had a stamp set, I think it was called Stoked, um, but I had totally stoked. And this is my grandson Carter on the 4th of July, our refrigerator broke down. Luckily, uh, the oldest son owns the hardware store. So he came out with a new refrigerator on the 4th of July, hottest day of the year. And my grandson Carter Kirk had so much fun, but blotches and spots Watches. We've had them for years and we still love them today. Totally worked for, totally worked, I'm saying totally because I'm an 80s girl, totally worked for our grandson. Okay, this one here, I do have a process video on this one. And the reason that I pulled this one out, I want to show you another layout that is similarly fashioned. And I think that uh, first of all, before I pull it in, let's talk a minute about it. So it is Irresistibles cardstock plus season mix-ins. So this is Irresistibles cardstock where you do ink resist rubbing. This one and this one is also Irresistibles and this one. And then I offset it with a few uh, season mix-ins pattern paper and made the basic background grid with a linear series. I love these layouts where it's the same photo in a hundred different ways. So this is my granddaughter Claire Adeline playing in the costume box <coughs> and I love that and then these daisies are from our Daisy Daisy collection and then this piece here is just a little design like a little design um, it could, it, it's a card front, I believe. So we have card front thin cuts. If it isn't a card front, I actually just grabbed it on the Cricut, but I love adding those things for texture in the background. So again, another thing that works really well for texture in the background is, you know, when you punch out your die cuts and there's like a square left of all these shapes where the die cuts were, that's a great texture piece, throwaway piece that you can add for texture in the background. But the reason I wanted to show this this one to you is I wanted to show you my little things layout so you can see the similarities in the little things the only difference in the little things so little things was six by six paper so we had smaller bits and pieces to work with but then I did a series of three by three added some die cuts that came right from the kit a couple little Cricut cuts the enjoy the moments and the um, these little delicate flowers were right from the die cut sheet but if we could put these side by side, you can see the linear photos here. And then if we put this one side by side, you can see the linear photos here. How wonderful is this layout for those series photos? Like just playing around with your grandkids or even of yourself where you're doing a row of selfies. Um, I can't remember why this one is in here. I think I... Um, oh, I think maybe it went with the other Irresistibles. So this was Irresistible cardstock in the back. This was the Let's Play stamp and thin cut set with lots of ink distressing in the background and stamping in the background. And I made scribble circle around with a, a pen, a Cricut pen. All right, you guys, are you ready for this oldie, oldie? Oldie. Oh my gosh, I'm embarrassed. Uh, I'm embarrassed, but I'm also proud. It's like beautiful friendship. And 
I pulled this one because I have a series here of grids and I want to show you a series of the evolution of grids over time and how we've used grids. This was one of the very first workshops that I ever did and it reminds me of my grandmother's wallpaper. It was a tea set. So I made this ginormous teacup, which I was famous for in the beginning especially. And then I did cricket writing all the way around the teacup. Yes, I had to drag each word in there because we didn't have curved text. You can tell by the ribbon on all the pages that that was all the rage back then. And then corner rounding. We corner rounded everything and then put the corner uh, the rounded corner pieces in the grid and I, there is a tiny little bit of popping up uh, so even back then we were starting to do a little bit of popping up but I crack up when I see that I stamped each uh, each photo so that you would know it was a photo because you might not know it's a photo if I didn't stamp that <laughs> so crazy so crazy I love seeing that another grid I think I have six grids in a row I'll go relatively quickly this is a serenity grid so using the grid as a backdrop gorgeous gorgeous backdrop popped the whole grid up to give it dimension another grid here with the spring seasons four seasons spring a, an exact duplicate almost, except for just used in a different way. Another photo frame popped up on the top instead of random photos. Lots of thin cutting in there as well. Okay. And then another grid style. This one was flower shop and changing the grid up by putting that overlay block in the background and adding a couple little strips on the side using the grid itself as the decorative element. Wow, just pops by doing that. One more grid style. That's why there's 120. I didn't count these. This was Backyard Bliss. Basic grid style. How completely different. Let's just pull all those out just for a second. Um, if you can humor me, but all grids, all used in different ways, you can see them, how different each of those looks in terms of the grid style and using the grid in the back. I had someone ask me, what's a grid? Um, and a grid is just your different squares. Here's another grid. This one here is called uh, Memory Lane. And I do have a process video on that one. A completely different look with that grid style. Isn't it incredible how different grids can look with different papers? So that's why I counted 120 because I just wanted to show those grid series so that you could see. Here's another one that I do have a process video for. Another memory lane. Tons of watercolor ink pad wash in this one. Um, painting with a water brush with the ink pad by adding water to the ink from our ink pad and painting all the houses and the trees. Then sponging on the flowers instead of coloring each flower just uh, uh, rubbing those with a sponge dauber using teeny pieces of a scribble circle backing a cricket house with pattern paper and adding banners and things right from the sticker sheet it was so fun and so pretty all right we're really going backwards here this is so flat i had to bring this out to show you um this was called charlotte and it was actually an example of pocket scrapbooking on a 12 by 12. There's literally nothing. It is so flat. There's just nothing on this at all. And I get blown away. I remember being so happy about this page. And I still love this page today. But look at the difference in scrapbooking back then. How linear everything was. And how flush everything was. Nothing was raised or popped up. Everything was flat flat and this was an example of using pocket scrapbooking in a regular traditional 12 by 12. Here's another one of Charlotte just to show how flat the scrapbooking was. Um, I did use a little bit of ribbon in that one but I can 
can run my hand across these pages and there's not one thing that is popped or popped up. I loved these pages. I still love these pages today, but the evolution of scrapbooking is crazy. And I do have people out there today that absolutely will not pop one thing up. They love everything flush. That's their style. Another one that I pulled from the archives, I think it was called Seaside. Um, and again, I can run my hand across here. The only thing that we had that was relatively clunky back then is we had metal. We had quite a few metal things and they were heavy. And these are really, really heavy. So we used liquid glass to get those metal things on there. We used a lot of brads, um, but it was a lot of basic, basic boxy style. Again, I love it today still just so so different all right we are so close to the end my friends uh we have one little stack this is all we have left of the 500 page series which ended up being about 600 pages i feel like i could do this for another five weeks but you have to stop somewhere <laughs> I don't think you guys could tolerate another one. Uh, so here we have um, You Are Enough again. And this was an example of an enormous frame overlay. So I made an enormous frame overlay and backed all the photos with paper piecing. And let's see, do I have this backwards? No, 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 no. I might have this backwards. I'm looking at this butterfly and he either got flipped around or I have it backwards. But the it was an odd shaped photo, like six by eight that you could crop down and put the back in the photo frame and just cluster it with all the flowers. And it was really, really a gorgeous photo piece. One of those that you could put maybe at a graduation or at a wedding or something like that. Um, this one was, I think, the end of You Are Enough, and I think it goes this way, and there wasn't much of anything left, and there was also hard-to-use patterns left. So this large dot, as cute and wonderful and bubbly as it is, it was a little difficult to use because it was quite loud, and so I used it as the background frame, offset it with black. Often if you offset with a solid, it'll break apart that um, busy pattern for your eyes to get a rest and then it was stenciling and inking and distress stamping in the background so we had word stamps we had splotch stamps we had little um little lined stamps and so a ton of that in the background and three little strips in the center so i had the the uh frame the gutted frame and three little strips of paper in the center is all that i had for that i did use some uh, wash cardstock for the backgrounds of the photo mats and then making the beautiful florals with the stamp set that came with you are enough I hope I'm saying you are enough correct if I'm not people have been screaming at me the whole time we had a couple bashes that were with some really big beautiful lines like that I'm pretty sure this one I just brought in I think it was supposed to go with the grids and it was a timber grid, a simply scrapping. The only thing that was popped up on this grid page is the wooden shapes. And um, we were learning a little bit about coloring wooden shapes. And I love a masculine page like that. Back to You Are Enough. This was, um, let's see here. So this was two different ways, I think, to do this. And so you could do a white background. I also did a video on this on how to create a paint pad painted background. So I took my paint pads. Actually, I didn't take my paint pads. You could take your paint pads, but I used a brayer, a roller, and I rolled it in our ink, and then I just rolled it on all of the edges to make a colored background. So some people don't like the star white I actually like both ways I like that interesting background but I like the stark white as well again showing how to use the scribble circles and doing the distressing on the flowers using little banners on the bottom all of these little pieces were stamped and distressed and stenciled on top of the stamps. The title was a stamp and the subtitle was a stamp as well. So I do have um, I do have a process video on how to do that background with the brayer. 
Uh, this one I do have a process video on as well. Memory Lane Paper Strips, just another play on classic paper strips. Paper strips all the way down and decorating in a little bit of cluster, adding the little houses here and a sticker title and um, topping it off with a little bit of journaling here. My gorgeous granddaughter, Gracie May. Okay, here we are. Another memory lane, another one of my granddaughters, Maya Jean. This was a full process video and it was problem solving problem photos. Maya Jean had given me all these photos of her. Um, there was like one of them that was black and white, two of them that were sepia, and two of them that were colored. And I was like, ah! how can I make those jive so I made all of them sepia toned and then the gorgeous gorgeous memory lane flowers that we had here I did those flowers just with rubbing with a sponge dauber on those flowers to do a really quick fast way of coloring is just rubbing them all with yellow and then coming back in with a little bit of pink in the centers um, strips here I did a lot of distressing on the circle so it's hard to see but I did stenciling here with one of our diamond stencils ink splattering and then a little bit of inking with the colored ink as well as the toffee ink on the edges and a little fun journaling around the corner there some tiny little cricket flourishes not much I loved how that ended up turning out and I'm so happy that I changed the color to sepia tone in that. One more memory lane here. This was, um, again, stenciling in the background. So we had this great leaf stencil here. So I stenciled all the leaves in the background and then topped each of those clusters up with stickers. I actually stamped all of the white houses um, and then left those white to offset the bold colors. Some tearing of some strips down here just for a fun play on the bottom. And some of those same flowers and that same stenciling down here. These are three other granddaughters. Yes, I do have eight grandkids and six of them are girls. So there's girls, girls everywhere. Uh, but this is their dog Pepper who is photobombing their picture that day. Going way back here again to just so show the changes over time. This was Snow Haven. And this was a layout that was from one of our pattern books. I've shown this layout before with the hodgepodge patterns up there. But again, I can run my hand across the whole thing and it is just flush and flat with nothing popped up, everything linear on that. But I did love the colors in Snow Haven. And in fact, uh, before they announced the closing of Close to My Heart, I think I asked for Snow Haven to be a bring back our pack so many times I really wanted it to be brought back oh my word embarrassing but see the difference I mean it was so flat and so basic paper paper picture slap a couple stickers on and that was my earliest scrapbooking so crazy how different it is okay are we let's see was this are we there yet are we there yet? Is this, are we there yet? The world is yours. Are we there? I think it's, are we there yet? So I did a little fun play on crisscross, just putting strips across the bottom and overlapping those and crisscrossing those into the center and then putting two focal photos, adding some strips at the top. And we had these great, great paper airplanes that we could back with paper and really, really cute rubber suitcase stickers that were so fun. So a little bit of cluster of some stickers up here and some popping up and so you can see the difference in the evolution popped 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 and then the puff stickers are thicker you know so we've come full circle here into lots and lots of dimension are we there yet was a very very popular collection this one I've shown before because it was um I was featuring melon which was a color of the year who was it right before journey or was there one in between journey anyway melon was our color of the year and as of a few days ago i am not kidding you guys maybe a week ago these leaves were still available my all time favorite thin cut 
leaves and they have the veins that are a separate thin cut from the background and then they also had a stamp that you could do tone on tone on these leaves gorgeous i will use those forever i'm so happy i have them go check i mean i know everything is practically gone but there's a massive uh clearance section still they could be there i'm not gonna say that they aren't but i believe they're called simple leaves or layered leaves simple leaves layered leaves ah they're so gorgeous so so gorgeous that was with season mix-ins uh flopping back here to are we there yet this was just a super fun play on chevrons so i have a white chevron in the back and then i layered all the chevrons on top and i randomly popped not randomly but i popped one of each up uh, so that it added dimension and then did the fun play of the photos just tucking all the travel icons in there and then here's those rubber stickers that were suitcases again this one I pulled uh, for a couple reasons. Um, let me see here if I can find, yeah, the last one. So this was a fun one. Um, and does this even go? Oh, no, this goes with that last one. So sorry. So um, this was a fun one because this is actually a Cricut cut that is a um, not a tag, what do you call those, um, where they're just little shapes. And I actually took that shape and cut lots of little shapes out of it so that I could paper piece it in the background and I left four four by four slots in the center and it was just a way to use a whole like postage um, frame a whole little frame and usually they're little they're just little icons that you can find on the Cricut they're probably even under basic shapes this one's been used a lot and cut in half to be put on the sides of things but it was a fun feature photo and then I just created a circle ring um, and to thinking that that would be on a focal journal part or a focal photo and have that separate that basic grid there in the center this one is more recent i have a couple that are more recent i did a full video 75 pieces of artwork that i created from our current catalog not knowing it was going to be our last catalog but i just went through the entire catalog and recreated all of the featured artwork in the catalog and i'll link that in the description but this was just a fun banner page that used just about every collection in actually every collection in the catalog so it has a little bit of let's go anywhere it has a little bit of honey bunny it has a little bit of season mix-ins in there in all of the banners and then we had the honey bunny scrapbooking stamp and thin cut that i made the bunny out of and did a little fun offsetting here with some glitter paper seabrook i think was the glitter paper most of those papers were season mix-ins. This is another one of those that came from my 75 pieces of artwork share. And I recreated this one using our dot embossing folder and our dot stencils and our flower embossing folder and did a little some kind of treatment on each cardstock strip. So I did a little bit of dash lines with our white journal pen. I did sandpaper with um, dot embossing. I did stencil with the dot stencil and then I did sandpaper with the flower embossing and this was such such a cute cute set with those little boots and I did paper piecing with that with that season mix-ins paper this is another one that I did do a process video on and I haven't posted it because before I could get it posted just about every other YouTube maker out there created the same one and so I was like well I don't know if my paper crafters want to see my version of the same layout or not. I didn't add a companion to it or anything. I created it exactly as it was created in the catalog and I loved doing it. I did give dimension. So I guess if anyone out there says, go ahead and post it, it's already all done. I just never posted it, but I love this Cricut set. The boat with the little fishing, uh, there's a fishing girl and a fishing boy or a fishing man and a fishing woman has the little can of worms and this is my uh my my brother my son and my grandson and they are all three avid avid fishermen we are there 
we are there we are on the last layout in the series are we there yet so we received these punch out die cuts in the kit and i thought that they were so fun as just basic backgrounds i added a stitched circle and i put little paper strips across the white circle trimmed it out and put it on top for just a little fun play in the background an oversized camera from i believe it is from the are we there yet collection i think don't quote me on that and then we have these great stack suitcases on the are we there yet collection as well and we did it thank you from the bottom of my heart for following me for the last nine years in close to my heart you have blessed me i am so grateful for all all the friendships made. I hope you'll follow me uh, to Stampin' Up! come May 1st and you'll stay tuned right here for more Close to My Heart creating, Stampin' Up! creating, and the perfect marriage of creating with both Stampin' Up! and Close to My Heart. Thanks for being my paper crafting friends. I appreciate you and I have loved every second. Now I'm getting emotional. Happy scrapping everyone!